Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, June 28th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. We had a strong G4 geomagnetic storm earlier today that is waning, coming from a plasma filament that wasn't expected to, well, create such a severe geomagnetic storm. Also today, a major earthquake in Peru, 7.2 magnitude, tsunami warnings canceled. Keep calm, it's boom time. Large hail and damaging wind threatens the plains Midwest amid wide severe weather threat Friday. Severe thunderstorms may develop from parts of the central plains into the middle and upper Mississippi Valley through the evening on Friday. Large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes are possible. In Colorado, afternoon storms return with a chance of ping pong ball size hail. Buckle up, Buttercup. Get that helmet on. Severe weather, heavy rainfall, and flooding possible across Kansas City Metro Friday. And Arctic Alaska pummeled by rare, severe storms, creating a first for the National Weather Service. And what is that first? You have to figure anyone who's receiving the warning would be surprised. It turns out that they are the most northernmost and westernmost severe thunderstorm warnings ever issued in the U.S. and its territories, according to Alaska climatologist Brian Bretschenschneider. The latest warning of the four issued Thursday reaching 68.3 degrees north and 164.64 degrees west. While this is a record, it is a record based on position and nothing else. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He says it doesn't snow in Alaska. Video shows a meadow tsunami slamming Lake Michigan amid days of severe weather. Here is what to know, and let's take a look at the meadow tsunami. All right, here it comes. There it is. Not that fantastic. Back-to-back -back days of severe weather brought widespread flooding across the Midwest and even a tsunami on Lake Michigan. It wasn't the typical kind of tsunami caused by seismic activity, but footage of the weather event showed how dangerous these tides can be. And you could see, well, we couldn't even tell. It was, uh, yeah, it was a sped-up video, so who knows what would have happened if you would have been standing there. Here's the forecast. Severe thunderstorms across portions of the Central Plains and Mississippi Valley. Heat continues in the Southern Plains. Severe thunderstorms may develop from parts of the Central Plains into parts of the Middle and Upper Mississippi Valley today. Large hail damaging winds are primary threats, as well as a couple of tornadoes possible. Heat will continue across the Southern Plains for the remainder of the week with several record tying or breaking highs possible. So heed the warnings and click on your county for more information over at weather.gov. A quick look at the GFS model shows very little severe weather until the end of the weekend here, Sunday, fun day for Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, as a system moves east, bringing rain all the way through Monday morning. And that is about all to report on over the next several days. Nothing spectacular in the forecast. South America's snowiest start to a season in 30 years. And you don't hear any... Shut up, Al! Get, get in your hole! Al Gore is very upset about the record-breaking snow in the Southern Hemisphere. Record cold freezes the sea in Tierra del Fuego down near Antarctica and... Well, the media is silent. South America's snowiest start to a season in 30 years. The ski season in South America is shaping up to be one of the most remarkable in decades. Early season snowfall has been abundant with multiple storms blanketing resorts across Chile and Argentina. And we can thank Hunga Tunga for that. Record cold freezes the sea in Tierra del Fuego. The remarkable snows in Chile and Argentina are coinciding with persistent and record-breaking cold. 
This May was Chile's coldest since 1950, according to the country's meteorological agency. And the new chill is now intensifying through June, which is a June boom. Tsunami warning canceled after a 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit Peru. A large magnitude 7.2 earthquake struck Peru early Friday morning, but authorities canceled a possible tsunami alert after just a few hours. The epicenter of the quake was five miles west of Ataquipa, a district in the southern Peru, around 375 miles south of the capital of Lima, according to the USGS. The quake struck at 12.36 a.m. local time, some 17 miles below the surface, minimizing damage. Had it been any higher, way more damage would have occurred. Just a few people injured and no deaths currently. Worldwide, oh, here is the seismic update, and there is that 7.2 in Ataquipa, Peru. Just one aftershock being reported at 4.4. Overall, low-level activity worldwide. Iceland's Reykjanes volcano could erupt for decades, maybe even centuries, as we have reported years ago as the activity heated up in the Reykjanes Peninsula. Not only that, during all historical eruptions of the Reykjanes, another large volcano erupts in Iceland, like Bartabunga or Ostja or Hekla or any of those large boomers. But the sad news is that the ongoing eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula has not only forced authorities to declare a state of emergency repeatedly, but many people have been evacuated from their lifetime homes. And based on new data, it seems possible that the volcanic activity will continue for years to decades and possibly even centuries. And the latest deformation measurements show rapid uplift in Svartsvengi, the speed of land increased after the eruption ended just a few days ago and is now greater than was ever measured before the eruption that began on May 29th. The rate of deformation can be interpreted as the magma inflow into the magma sphere at a depth of four to five kilometers continuing today. With these assumptions as a guide, it can be assumed that the system will behave in similar ways as before and that a new magma intrusion and or eruption will occur again in this area in the coming weeks, unfortunately. Santa Barbara volcano in the center of the Atlantic, the Azores, the ancient home of Atlantis, earthquake activity triggers a volcano uh, alert. Take a look at this. The Institute of Volcanology of the University of the Azores increased the volcanic alert level of Santa Barbara volcano on Terceira Island to V3 on a scale ranging from 0 to 6th. Red showing eruption. The decision came after a new seismic crisis has been affecting the western part of the island since June 24th, 2022. Who knew? Now you do. And the west... <laughs> the rest of the Worldwide Volcano News Update. Fuego today to 17,005. Etna, Santa Guito, Fuego, Karaminsk, all on the list. Reventador, 14,000 foot puff. Semaru, 15,000 foot puff. Sangay to 21. Karaminsk, 15,000 foot puff. Santa Guito, 13,000 foot puff. Ibu, puffing to 10,000 foot today. And take a look. Spectacular. The explosive eruption at Karaminsk continues. Merapi puffing to 12,000 today. Raventador, 15,000 foot puff. Ebeko puffing to 10. Semaru, 15. Karaminsk, 15. Savankaya, 22. Who knew? Now we all do. Nevada de Ruiz coming in today with a 20,000 foot puff. Savankaya to 23. And that wraps up Worldwide Volcano News for June 28th. Space weather for June 28th, 2024. Al Gore's aboard. Very low level activity on the sun down in the low sea range. As I believe solar max is over and we're now dropping down into solar minimum. There are tons of sunspots on the disk. Just nothing happening. Look at all these sunspots. No activity. The only activity that blasted us into G4 extreme geomagnetic storm earlier today. Actually, it's severe. Extreme is G5. Was a plasma filament that left the sun just a few days ago. And it is a lasting geomagnetic storm now for 
three, six, nine, 12, 15 hours, hours of powers. And you can see here from the telemetry, the passing of that coronal mass ejection in that filament. Rising plasma speed, not that high, just to 500 kilometers per second. And we got to KP8. Are you kidding me? Here is the, the model showing that filament. And we, we got a little bit more than a glancing blow. So this white center was closer to Earth than they modeled. Now, could there be reverberations? Perhaps. But the BZ is showing, shown here going flat. Density is dropping. Speed is dropping. There is no chance for good aurora watching tonight. In fact, there is none. So... Bad news that a geomagnetic storm would occur in the middle of the day, especially a severe one, which could have kicked off auroras in North America and Canada. But I do digress. China finds something strange in a sample removed from the far side of the moon, the first sample ever recovered by humans. Using a form of the non-destructive chemical analysis called Raman spectroscopy, the team confirmed the discovery of a type of few-layer graphene, Ian, from Timcast IRL would be pleased. Yeah, so there is a new few-layer graphene found on the far side of the sun, which is graphene with anywhere between 2 and 10 layers that can also be manufactured in the lab. Now, researchers suggest the material may have formed as the result of solar wind battering the lunar surface or volcanic eruptions. Could it be a micronova? Probably not. Scientists want to pour 60,000 gallons of sodium hydroxide into the ocean off of Cape Cod to test a carbon dioxide removal process. Well, that sounds as stupid as it sounds. Sodium hydroxide is a poison. And biodiversity advocates on Wednesday called on the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to reject this new geoengineering product spearheaded by a bunch of idiots in Massachusetts that one critic said would do nothing to solve the root causes of the climate crisis and instead put the oceans at risk. Let's solve one problem by creating another. Are we all being brainwashed? Well, obviously. 90% of all of the modern world is staring into their square most of the day. Hey, hey. And we have the technology to brainwash your ass. And yet, the modern human is unaware that it's occurring. Nobody knows they're in a cult until they leave it. But what if the majority of mainstream thought and discourse is in fact a part of brainwashing and indoctrination? Well, if you think this is a crazy idea, apparently you missed the boat. It's been going on for decades and it's almost completely done. Nee, nee, nee. A 42,000-year-old perfectly intact horse discovered in permafrost proves a couple of things. That the permafrost has been frozen in perpetuity for the entirety of 42,000 years. Not only that, scientists extract blood from this 42,000-year-old foal. That's insane. But what it does mean is that this permafrost has been up in the Arctic, frozen continuously for 42,000 years which means a lot of the alarmists and catastrophists with their crazy 12,000-year earth flip models and this, us, and such are way off the mark because no way this would exist, period. You want to survive and thrive in the coming times and your family needs life-saving saving medication, but you won't be able to get to your doctor, you can purchase the medication ahead of time and store it. Put it up like a prepper. The Jace case 
provide you with custom emergency medications, emergency life-saving medications, and antibiotic, antibiotics to use anytime you want to use, including things like ivermectin, things that are banned that you can't even get from your doctor. You can get anything you want here from the team at Jace Case. Just go over and talk to one of their doctors. In a few seconds, they'll set you up, and you can get your customized Jace Case in just a few days. UTIs, traveler's diarrhea, pneumonia, a whole cacophony of antibiotics to survive and thrive in the coming times. You can get ivermectin, albuterol, and many other add-ons. Check them out. Support our channel. Support your preparedness. Well, and save your life, perhaps. Did you hear we finally beat Medicare? Thank you, Joe Biden. You're our hero. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. We are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Watch all of our podcasts in one place commercial free. We'll see you all in Crestone for the 4th of July celebration. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.